Hey, what's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Simple Man's Comics. We do a lot of comic, pop, culture related content on this channel. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. In this video, we're going to give you our trade paperback picks for the week. That's right, we got them from each publisher, and each of us have a wild card. These are our picks for the week of April 8th, 2020. But last night, we also premiered a new back issue bolo on the channel, didn't we, Jack? That's right, brand new top 10 back issues to be on the lookout for while you're stuck at home. These are great books to be paying attention to as the market right now is in a downturn and there's some great buying opportunities out there. But you know what, Brian? I'm real excited right now to be filming and talking about trade paperbacks. This is the Trade Report Volume 2. And you know what? This is maybe not what speculators want, but this is what the community needs because we're all stuck inside and it's a great time to read comics. Yeah, as we always say, the great thing about trades is you get to digest a whole chunk of story at one time, whether it's a story arc, whether it's a whole volume. Either way, trades are a great way to catch up on those stories. But before we get into our picks, last week we announced the giveaway, commented on that video. We were going to put those in a randomizer, pick one, and then we're going to win that volume one trade paperback of Canto. And we're going to do that right now. And the winner is... Frankie Gonzalez. He commented, something is killing the children. It's great. Just came out in trade. I'd recommend it to anyone. And we would too. We love that story. You know we're all fans of Boom Studios, but something is killing the children is a great story. And it did just come out in trade. So we highly recommend picking that up. But Frankie Gonzalez, send us your address in an email at simplemanscomics at gmail.com. And we will get that Canto trade out to you. And with that being said, we're going to get into our picks for trade paperbacks this week, starting with Marvel. And Marvel, this time we have that Iron Man Demon in the Bottle trade paperback. This was one of those stories that, you, you know, substance abuse wasn't really talked about. We all know Neil Adams from the Green Arrow, Green Lantern. But here we have Marvel with Tony Stark having a little bit of alcohol problem, right? Yeah, and there were like hints of this in the MCU with Robert Downey Jr. around the time of about Iron Man 2. But I really wish this would have been a storyline that they delved into because it truly humanizes Tony Stark. Now, there's already a, enough that humanizes the character with you know, enough of the drawbacks of kind of the selfish playboy uh, millionaire. But um, at the same point, uh, it, this story really gave him, a, you know, a enemy to fight that was different than who he typically is used to going up against all while going up against the typical enemies that Iron Man has to go. This is a, a story where he's dealing with Justin Hammer and, you know, what, like his army of, uh, of um, villains. And, you know, it's, it's, this is a classic Iron Man story and one that really was groundbreaking for its time. And just that, that iconic um, Bob Layton cover, that Demon in a Bottle cover, it, that book sells in and of itself three times more than what you're going to pay for this trade. You can get this collected issues 120 through 128 for around $18 or used about $13 on Amazon. That is a really great buy. And also check with your LCS because I've seen that collected edition in discount trade sections in the past. Yeah, and another thing we talk about also is check with your local libraries, especially a lot of libraries are doing the online checkout right now. And if you don't have that, also check with the app Hoopla. Did a video on this channel about Hoopla. Put a card up there right now and a link to that in the description. Another way you might be able to read it without having to spend any money. So then switching from Marvel over to our DC pick this week, we're talking about that Watchmen trade. Now, we just talked about issue number one on this channel, didn't we, Jack? Yeah, we did. And this is one of those classic books that I feel like any comic book fan has to have in their library. Um, but on top of that, this is a great book to introduce to somebody who maybe has been a little reluctant to get into comic books. Maybe they're more of a, you know, a novel reader or, you know, they, they've always kind of looked down on comic books as a medium. Or they think we, comics are too cheesy or too... Yeah, too kiddie, not, yeah. not made for an adult audience. This is a great introduction to somebody. This, this is Alan Moore at his best. And this book truly is one of the um, kind of like landmarks of comics. And, you know, if we're going to talk DC comics and we're going to go through trades, there, there's no way that we can't bring up Watchmen. And the reality is it's one of those books that I read and reread kind of on a yearly basis. Uh, it, it's, it's great time and time again. It's good to have a refresher of that book. And uh, you know, it's one that you can really sit down and get into. 
Yeah, it's almost like the Mickey Mantle of trade paperbacks, I would say. I mean, if you have a trade paperback collection, you need to have this in there. It's probably the closest you can come to, like, comic book Shakespeare because Alan Moore, this Watchmen story is kind of like – a lot of people refer to it almost as, like, the perfect comic book, right? Right, and the great thing about it is because it's been kind of printed and reprinted by DC Comics every time – that the Watchmen kind of gets popular, it gets reprinted. But on top of that, it's one of the most consistent sellers for uh, local comic shops. The most local comic shops tell you that they have to keep that in stock. You can find it incredibly affordably. I mean, I'm talking about under ten dollars, around like eight dollars. You can find it used for just a few dollars, and you can find it even more expensive because they print out hard covers, oversized. Either way, yep. There's a reason why it's been printed so many times, and Watchmen's a great story. So if you don't have it, that's one that's definitely worth picking up. We talked about Marvel. We talked about DC. We're going to switch over now into Image. And before he was writing Venom, before he was writing Guardians of the Galaxy, before he was writing Absolute Carnage, we also had him over there at Image writing God Country. Here's one of those mini series that took off like gangbusters and for good reason. This is one of those great stories. And of course, we're talking about Donny Cates. Yeah, and this is really the story that put Donny Cates on the map. I know a lot of people can point to this, that, or the third, but, you know, I literally saw this firsthand covering comic book conventions. And, you know, when this book came out and did what it did on the secondary market, he, immediately his lines changed at conventions. His demand to be at comic book conventions changed. Um, and suddenly he became a hot commodity. And the next thing you know, he was signed to an exclusive deal with Marvel and then we got Thanos and everything afterwards. So this is kind of an important book in if you're a Donny Cates fan, in the career of Donny Cates. But here's the other thing. There's a lot of different reasons to read this book. Number one, it's a great story. And it's a complete story. Beginning, middle, end. Yeah. You, you know, there's not a sequel to it. And there's not going to be one from what there's, you said. Right. There's not going to be one. So, so it's, it's the kind of thing where you can sit down and digest an entire story. It, like most image trade paperbacks, incredibly affordable. $13 or so, you can pick this up. But the other thing is, um, you know, this is going to be a movie. Donny Cates is writing a movie. He's working on the movie. He's very... Yeah, he's, worked, he's completed the screenplay, right? Yes. And it's been, apparently it's been approved by the studio, which is a big hurdle to jump through to get that um, script approved. So I think once all of this current health climate stuff um, clears up, which we know is going to take a while, there this is going to be a project they're going to move forward on. So, you know, if you wanted to read the book before the movie comes out, this is a great opportunity while we're all stuck at home, but also to the 1% of the, the uh, investing and speculating community that still, you know, wants to pay attention to this trade paperback show. This is a great, we talk about, this is a great opportunity to read a book and decide whether or not you see this as a big investment. So maybe um, right now we're in a down market. God Country number one, both cover A and cover B are trading below what they typically would. Uh, you know, if you never read God Country, and this is read it now, and that you know thirteen dollars that you spend on that trade paperback could make you hundreds in resale value down the road. So there's a lot of great reasons to read this book, but I'm telling you, it's a great story, and if you read it, you'll immediately see why he was destined to write Thor. Right, and then talking about being optioned or movie news or TV news. Moving over to Boom, we got another one just like that with The Woods, right? Right, and not only is this a property that's been optioned and we're going to see it play out, I think, on the small screen, but this is also very similar to God Country in that this is, I think, the kind of the first big independent work of James Tinian IV, who's now the Batman writer. So um, James Tinian, who also wrote Something's Killing the Children, as we mentioned earlier in the show. Um, you know, James Tinian is kind of becoming that it guy. And this is a great time to go read one of his kind of, you know, I don't want to say older, it's about four or five years old, but um, older stories. Uh, it, there is a great hardcover out right now. It's called the Yearbook Edition. It collects issues one through 12. It's on sale um, most places. Amazon's got it for like $20. The cover price is like 30. Uh, when you start looking at the value of something like that, $20 for 12 issues, issue number one will sell regularly for 15 to $20. So there's great value right there. This is a book that when I got back into comics, um, I'm, I had gotten back in kind of flipping, but what I really got back in heavily reading 
um, this was one of the first stories I picked up and I, I really enjoyed it. And immediately upon reading it said, this is bound to be a TV show or movie. So this is a great one and it's a great time to kind of get caught up on some of this media stuff that maybe we missed out over the last few years. Then shifted from boom over to IDW. If you're an eighties kid, this is one book that you might want to pay attention to. And we're talking about that first volume of the IDW collection for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is a great one. You can get a fantastic hardcover. But what else is included in this one, Jack? Well, here you're getting the first 12 issues from the IDW series of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And on the back issue market, these issues can get quite expensive. So picking them up in trade is a great opportunity to read those stories. But you're also going to get the uh, kind of like the one-shot individual character issues that came out kind of those origin stories you know michelangelo donatello leonardo Raphael. so getting all of those encompassed within there as well but here's the big thing about this set and the reason why i think it's important to be on the list of these books are a kind of standard practice for idw whether you're talking gi joe transformers or ninja turtles there is a standard what they call the idw collection hard bound they all have the sim same kind of look um, and they retail for $50, but oftentimes, like right now with this one, you can find them when they're a little older on sale. This one's going for about $33 right now on Amazon, used for like $28, um, but these are must-haves, I feel like. If you're a Ninja Turtles fan, people ask us all the time, like, where should I... Where should I start? And it's kind of tough because, you know, origin stories are a little slow and, you know, there's maybe some better stories, but I tell you, you will not be disappointed putting, picking your favorite licensed property, whether it's Ninja Turtles, G.I. Joe, or Transformers, and start building an IDW um, kind of complete collection, hardcover collection, because you're going to enjoy it, that it's, it's the best way to put these sets together. Yeah, you can tell Jack and I are both fans of IDW on this channel. And we love these stories. This isn't going to be one of those sexy picks that a lot of people are going to want to resell. But if you want to read those fantastic stories that we like to talk about on here, there's a good place to start. And moving into our indie pick this week, we have from Mad Cave Studios, Honor and Curse Volume 1. This is a fantastic story. Mark London, we got Nicholas Salamanca on art. Can't say enough good things about this. We like this, and we also like Knights of the Golden Sun. And this, everyone was talking about Knights of the Golden Sun, but actually, Honor and Curse was outselling it from Mad Cave Studios, wasn't it, Jack? Yeah, it was outselling it. I enjoyed the story a bit more than I liked Knights of the Golden Sun, just my opinion, and I feel like it's also more adaptable. It's like a story. supernatural samurai. Yeah, it's just, it felt a little different, and it was, uh, Knights of the Golden Sun had a very kind of light feel, and uh, Honor and Curse had kind of a dark feel. It was a good kind of juxtaposition of the two, but um, we've talked about these stories, and, you know, I know a lot of people out there have had a tough time getting access to small press published books, especially these Mad Cave Studio releases, so picking up a trade is an, a great opportunity to you know be able to catch up on a story and it gives you a feel of what a publisher like mad cave studios is all about i promise you if nothing else you will be blown away by the art in this book that it's it's absolutely fabulous and in the back of the honor and curse book there's actually a portrait of the cbsi variant that brian and i helped usher into the world so that's kind of cool on a personal level but you know what brian I think first off, people need to go to Mad Cave Studios web store. And you know, if, you're, if they're looking to buy this book, support the publisher, they've got them. You can it's read the first issue for free also on their website. Right, right, so check out the first issue, see if you like it, and then grab the book from the web store. But you know what, I think on top of that, we gotta give one away for free. So go, we're gonna do another contest, another giveaway. Please comment on the video what do you like when you're buying your collected issues how do you like to buy them do you like them in omnibus form do you like trade paperbacks do you like hard covers what are you looking for in your collected issues go ahead and comment on the video and next week we will announce the winner of this honor and curse trade from mad cave studios yeah so definitely for those that can't get their hands on it and want to win one for free just like he said comment down below and we'll pick that winner next week but now We've talked about Marvel, DC, Image, Boom, IDW, and our Indie Pick of the Week. Now we're going to get into our wild card picks. Jack, I'm going to let you go first this time. 
Okay. Because last time <laughs> I said you cheated. I was just giving you a hard time. But, Jack, <laughs> you go ahead and go first. What, what's your wild card pick this week? Again, I'm going wild card with it, Brian. This is the wild card pick. So I'm getting a little wild with it. You know, we're not going to talk about a trade paperback, an omnibus, um, or any sort of hardcover. I'm going to talk about coffee table art books. Um, and I'm talking about the Marvel Hip Hop Variant Covers, Volume 1, a hardcover book collection of all of those hip hop variant covers that came out. If you grew up a fan of hip hop like I did, and I know you did as well, Brian, um, you know, a lot of these covers were extremely nostalgic. And regardless of what they were selling for on the secondary market, they were fun to pick up. But aside from the covers, I got to tell you, while an art book may not be the kind of book you can sit and like read, you'll be surprised the amount of time you can spend flipping through the pages, really spending time enjoying the cover art, kind of in a blown up format. And a lot of times there's added information. Um, it, I can't tell you how much information I've been able to retain by reading books like that and, and you know, picking up who's the cover artist on each cover and things like that. And it's also a really great book to add to your library and to have on your coffee table. It's a great discussion piece. Um, and it's, it, this book is affordable. It's, uh, it's on sale right now on Amazon. Um, a lot of LCSs carried this book as well. Um, and, but it's also a book you can easily find at like Barnes and Noble and places like that. Yeah, or check those big, um, sometimes those bigger stores like BJ's or Costco, if they're yeah. open, of course, have some of those for, for cheap. And I agree, I'd rather look at them at, in the collected edition like that rather than having all, I didn't buy all the single floppies yeah. for it because there's just so many of them. But Great wild card pick. And I'll go with mine this week. And it's a trade paperback. This is one of my favorite story arcs, one of the ones that got me into comics. And we're talking about, DC's Batman, A Death in the Family. That's right, collecting issues, Batman 426 to 429. And we got some great Jim Starlin writing goodness in this. This is one of those stories like, I was more into cards, started sliding over to comic books, and then this came out. And I remember those issues being super hard to find. This is pre-internet. And then the great thing, right, they had that 900 number hotline where you can call and vote. They had two 900 numbers, one to say, hey, does robin live or does robin die and then of course we all know what happens in this and this is one of those ones that's like old school trade paperback i'm talking like that that paper that um that newsprint type paper i mean i didn't buy the single issues and full full thing this is like way back this is what 88 i say way back <laughs> 88 and at the time being new to comics i thought hey i'm not gonna get the single issues if i buy this one that has them all together it's gonna be way more it's going to be worth more than everything because it's got them all in one book. Well, we know how that played out. But either way, fantastic story. The single issues still go for great money. A lot of people know what happened, right? You know, we all know Jason Todd. He was going to go try to find his mother. But instead, he gets kidnapped by the Joker, and the results aren't very good. And the results of that 900 hotline for people calling in, we're able to find out that. I mean, we can give spoiler alert now, right? Spoiler warnings. is. It's, it's, but here's the thing. If it wasn't for the events of this book, Brian, we would not have the Red Hood. Yep. So it's, while it's tragic, the events of the book, at the end of the day, something new is born. And this is a bit overlooked because a lot of people are paying attention to, say, the first appearance of Jason Todd and then the first appearance of the Red Hood. But without that moment in this book. Yeah. That, We're talking about the death, by the death. way. Yeah. Yeah, the crowbar. I mean, like, brutal death. Brutal, brutal. I mean, shocking, shocking to children type type thing. So if you haven't read it, yeah, this is, I mean, it's just, this is absolute must-read Batman. Um, you know, Batman has had a long lineage. There's certainly yeah. issues and runs and um, storylines you can skip. Um, but this is, this is just, if you were trying to introduce somebody to the Batman-Joker dynamic, I feel like there's just no better one than this. And man, what's hotter right now than the Joker? Yeah. And if you're young and you're just getting into comics and wonder where to start, I mean, there's a great story, especially for Batman. But, but not one of mine, and, and like I said, it's one sentimental value also too, because it's yeah. one of those first stories that I read that I was like, oh, and I started just buying comics and stopped buying baseball, football cards. But an interesting, interesting anecdote is I, I did an interview with Jim Starlin for a website. And uh, I told him that, you know, 
he obviously he's popular for the Marvel cosmic stuff, but this story was actually my favorite Jim Starlin story. And uh, at the end of the interview, he did a free sketch for me and he asked me what character did I want the sketch. And I asked him for Robin and he would not do it. He said he will not draw that character. He's done. <laughs> so I could not get a Robin sketch out of Jim Starlin. Yeah. But yeah, in each cover, like the single issues, they're those iconic covers where it's got each yeah. one of the characters, right? And you got like Joker, what has he got? Like the top hat and the monocle. And mm -hmm. then you got bloodied Robin. I mean, it's a great issue. And so highly recommend that. And that's my wild card for this week. So there's our picks. Also, just want to reiterate that we will put links in the description where you can get those on Amazon. And then, of course, the Mad Cave link for all the books that we talked about in this show, right? Absolutely. You know, support your LCS, support indie publishers. But if you can't get access to these books, we've got you covered with those Amazon links. Make sure you save money. Make sure you stay home. Make sure you stay safe. Make sure you stay healthy, but read comics. And with that being said, this is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. See you guys in the next video.